In this video, we'll talk about different types of wires and cables for solar power. Cables are a very important but often overlooked part of any solar power system. Most solar power kits or packages either do not come with cables included or only a limited portion of cables provided and the installer or homeowner is left to figure out what is needed to properly wire the system. That's because each installation is going to be unique so there isn't a one size fits all solution. There are three main things, in my opinion, that you need to understand about cables and wires to make an educated purchase decision for your own solar power system. Number one is that there are many different types of cables and wires that differ in conductor material, insulation, and flexibility. The ideal conductor for solar applications is pure copper. Aluminum is another option that's quite a bit cheaper than copper, but doesn't conduct electricity nearly as well, and will result in more lost energy through resistance. Cables have various sheathing and insulation materials that vary in their protective properties. Some work better in high temperatures, high moisture, high UV exposure, or when exposed to fire than others. For indoor solar wiring, such as in a shed or garage or attic, I would recommend using THHN cable. For wire exposed to the elements, such as underneath your solar panels, you can choose USE2 or RHW2 cables, but there's also a specific rating for solar called PV wire that's the best for your system. This is especially true for off-grid systems, as PV wire is the best for ungrounded systems. One other note is that wire technically means a single conductor, and cable means multiple conductors in the same sheathing. For low voltage DC wiring, that means either a solid core conductor that is very rigid and hard, or a stranded cable with multiple wires together that's much softer and easier to manage. Stranded is much easier to use, so that's what's almost always used. Solid core wire is generally reserved for grounding purposes. The second thing you should know is that the gauge or thickness and length of the cable will determine how much current can be safely carried. I cover this in better detail in other videos, but in short, the longer and skinnier the wire is, the more resistance it will have to conducting current. Excessive resistance can lead to energy loss or an electrical fire. When making this important decision, most of the time the length of the wire needed is already known because you can measure the distance between your solar panels and the charge controller or inverter. Likewise, the current that needs to be carried by the wire is already known too, based on how many solar panels you have and the system voltage. So, you probably already have those two variables set in stone. That just leaves you with choosing the appropriate gauge of wire to carry that amount of current over that specific distance. Luckily, there are numerous online calculators and charts that will help you make the right choice. My favorite is from freesunpower.com. And it isn't pretty to look at, but it's very simple to use and easy to understand. Look for a link to this calculator in the video description. The last thing you should know is my personal advice. Buy the thickest cable you can afford. Let me explain. Most of us don't want to spend a lot of money on wire for our solar panel system. We're already making a large investment in solar panels, inverters, charge controllers, batteries, and mounting equipment. So this is an area where we might be tempted to cut corners. But I've made that mistake in the past, and I can tell you from painful personal experience that buying wire twice or three times is much worse than buying the right wire the first time. And this isn't an area of your system to go cheap on. Your solar investment is at risk, and your own personal health is in danger if you make the wrong choice and start a fire. And in the future, you'll never regret having excess carrying capacity in your cables. You may not ever add more panels to your system, but you may have to rewire some things at some point and bigger wire will always give you more leeway and flexibility. I could give numerous examples of scenarios where your needs or system might change in the future, and I can promise you that if that happens, you're not gonna wanna throw away hundreds or thousands of dollars of wire because it's now too small and won't work. That wraps up this Solar Basics video. If you found it helpful, please leave a like and a comment below.